Today we are making this red oak double chevron table. This tabletop was made for a dog kennel that I built and that is my video just pre prior to this one where I show the building of the dog crate that this tabletop was mounted to. So now that we're gonna stick these boards together in a really not complicated way, um, we need to lay it out on a piece of paper. Now I have my plans all printed out already, but I sketch it out that way I can get all my dimensioning right because we're going for an inch overhang on all sides of um, our furniture piece. To make this table, I am going to basically be laminating the chevron to a half inch piece of plywood. The total thickness is a three quarter inch tabletop, not that thick and I'm using half inch plywood as a substrate and I'm going to glue my pattern to that. What that'll do is basically keep it from buckling and moving and things like that because if you do this a chevron with all solid wood you have so many grain directions going different ways that the expansion and contraction will kind of rip it apart and there's a reason I know that. I've done quite a few of these. The first one I got to do twice. Um, anyway, but this this works out and it tends to hold up well over time. So essentially that top portion is kind of like a custom made piece of plywood or that center section is kind of like a custom made piece of plywood, but one that takes a lot of work. Now we are just gonna prep all of my lumber. I'm gonna rip it to rough size and kind of estimate how much I need. I needed a few more actually when I was done with this. It didn't go right. And I'm starting with um, 3 quarter inch material. It's actually 13 sixteenths the way I buy it and then you just plane it down. Um, and I'm kind of rough cutting everything to size. It's already been jointed on one edge and then kind of ripped a slightly oversized because I'm going to resaw all this material. And my ideal thickness here is one quarter of an inch so I'm going to start by resawing it to about 5 sixteenths one side was slightly thicker than the other but that's why you go back and plane it after and we're just splitting that right down the middle a good rip blade is phenomenal for that I have a tin Ryu that I got from my buddy over at Texas Toolcraft um, that made easy work of that red oak and now we're just planing it all down to a consistent thickness What I'm doing with that flip that you see me do is basically try to make it where the crown is going up, if there is a crown. That way it um, just planes a little bit easier. And now it's just a lot of ripping the final size. Uh, my planks ended up being right about five inches. And so I started with you know my rough lumber and then I ripped it to about five and a half and then I did that final trim. And now we're going through and putting my 45 degree miters on all of this and I'm making sure to clamp it down with my clamp on my saw and just really take my time and do this. It's kind of a little bit monotonous, honestly, um, with how much repetition is, goes into these kind of tables. But at the same time, it's also really fun to get to make these because it's just challenging enough to keep you engaged in the process and there's also little frustrations and things you've got to do. So now I'm testing my layout and I'm just making sure everything looks good. I'm kind of rearranging the board so the grain looks the way I want it to look. And now it's time to start laying out. That big blue square you see is the TSO Products Precision Triangle. Um, it goes with the MFT top and you can use it as like a big protractor. It's extremely accurate. Um, it's it's a great tool that I really don't utilize to its full potential. I'm glad I have it, um, just because it's it's so nice for layout. But I really I don't use it to its full potential. And now we are just making sure it's all square and 
I'm gluing it down and I'm using my 23 gauge pin nailer to pin it from the top. It leaves such a small hole that you don't even really have to fill the nail holes. Of course, I did end up filling the nail holes after I was done. And it's just glue, nail, glue, nail, glue, nail, and then testing that fit. And what I'm doing here is human error ripping on the thing you're you're dealing with wood it it, it moves it's we're not dealing with that south thousandths of an inch so every once in a while you'll see me have to go over to the saw and make just a small little tweak on the angle um, one of the boards I had to kind of rip down like just like a hair's breadth just to get it right and it's that little fine tuning that will really set these apart because you don't want any gaps at all and it's really easy to get gaps on a table like this because you have so many different angles going so many different ways. Really making sure I get a really good uh, glue bond onto my plywood substrate because again, you want all this to stay where you put it. And if you're still watching, I am going to share with you what I actually would charge just for this tabletop as a standalone product um, at the end of the video. So you have to stick around for that. And I'm using my little offcuts to fill in those small places, but it's really important that you get the grain direction going the, the right way there. And so in the comments, tell me... Hmm. I'm trying to think. Tell me how long do you think this project took, and then I'll tell you how long it took, um, and then we'll go from there. So in the comments, guess how long this project took, and I'll tell you how long it took at the end of the video. And now I'm going through with uh, wood filler to fill in any little small gaps or cracks I have. Um, I use the Elmer's Stainable Wood Filler. That is the best I have found for dealing with woods that you are going to stain. If you're going to do a clear coat, then you can just use the, the super glue and sawdust trick. Um, but then that won't take stain and we're doing a stain on this. And now I'm trimming it to final size. I'm basically using the edge of the plywood as my measuring guide so that I get it perfectly straight. And basically, now we're making a rectangle. If you want to think about how this really went together, it's essentially like a really big door with a... That's going to be kind of the panel in the middle of it. And then it's going to have a border around it. And now we are sanding. Always lots and lots and lots of sanding in any project that I do. After I do that first initial sand, make sure I get everything leveled out. I do any more little touch-ups that I need to do. Um, this was a small little corner that kind of lifted up on me, so I'm getting it glued down with the Starbond adhesives. Um, really good project product that you should look at. And now we're moving on to dominoes. For my ends, I'm using what's known as the Fast Tenon from Fast Cap. It is actually a plastic domino that has little barbs on it. So when you hammer it in, like I did there, those little barbs grip. And so it only goes in, but it won't come out. And they work, I'm not going to say great, they don't replace regular dominoes but for something like this where it's pretty impossible to get a clamp on there um, they work really good for kind of pulling it together and holding and you'll see in a little bit how I did um, all of my ends so I can kind of work with the expansion and contraction of the wood but this worked really well for something you can't really get a clamp on because it's too long and of course you could mix this with regular dominoes too and kind of have a little bit more strength 
as I did the the border around this, I left all of my pieces long. That way I could go back and trim everything perfectly when I was done and it takes a little bit more time, but the finished result is what we're really concerned with. And then here are my sides. Now, you're probably wondering why I didn't do a true breadboard end um, that went all the way across the outside. Well, a breadboard end keeps your tabletop from cupping. The way this tabletop was made, it's not going to cup. But with our way expansion and contractions works, we want that perimeter board to be able to expand and contract. And the way the wood expands and contracts, this is the better way to have it in this situation. At least that is my belief. I'm sure someone can come along and explain why that's wrong. Because it is the internet after all. I'm obviously wrong in someone's point of view. Now we're moving on to our final glue up. Um, if you want to see how I set up this wall mounted panel clamp, uh, I do have a video over that. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory if you look at it, but now we're just gluing it up. And on the ends where the um, two perimeter pieces meet, I didn't actually glue that part, so that way if the, um, the end that's vertical right now expands, it can move and expand and contract. And I did that on all the ends, but it's held in place and held flat with domino tenons. And so I overcut the slot so it could have that room to move a little bit if it needs to. And now we clamp it and wait overnight. And we go back to more and more sanding to get this guy completely leveled out. Trimming the final size and then routing a little edge profile on there so that we have a nice little edge profile. And finally, more sanding. Lots of sanding. We'll cut out most of the sanding. Now for this project, I used Rubio Monocoat Dark Oak Finish. And it was really kind of fun to put on. It was different. It's really hard to judge how much you need to mix up. And I kept not having enough. And then at the end, I just kind of mixed a lot. And then I had some left over. And on some of the forums, some guys said I went a little bit too heavy with the application. But essentially, if you just make sure you get it all off after you get it, after it sets up or after it bonds with the wood. Um, it doesn't really matter how thick you put it on as long as you get it off. It's just a very expensive product and then you're wasting some. I didn't bother doing that center panel because it's plywood and it's getting mounted to a piece of furniture so there really wasn't a need to use the product on that. If it was solid wood, you want to seal everything. So now I'm wiping it on. I'm using a quadruple alt scotch bright pad the white scotch bright scrubber pad and just kind of scrubbing it on I know some guys use like a credit card or a paint spreader or something that probably was the way to do it but anyway you'll see me in a second after I do that final polish I'm going to throw one of the scotch bright pads onto my Rotex and it's literally just a rectangle pad that I stuck onto the Rotex and polished it in and the kids are home and now you got to keep them from touching everything dumping out my excess Rubio and now I'm just going to polish the whole thing in and that really kind of drives the finish into the surface and it really turned out nice I will will say that I like a, personally like a little bit glossier finish um, than Rubio produces um, so after I finished this up I went ahead and did a the universal maintenance oil top coat to give a little bit more shine Here's the finished result all said and done. This project took me about two full days to complete and what I would charge for this as a standalone tabletop would have been about $1,400 to $1,500. If you want to learn more about how I build tabletops and kind of the process that goes into a more normal tabletop that's not a diamond pattern, um, be sure to check the cards and the description. I'm going to link to a 
tutorial video I did for tabletops and I'm also going to link to the build video for this dog kennel that this went on top of that was my video right before this one. If I've earned your subscription I sure would appreciate the subscribe. If you like this video give it a like. If you dislike it give it a dislike and let me know in the comments what you think. Have a great day.